Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. If only there was a way to pay for college without going into debt. Oh, wait. There is. <laughs> That's what we're talking about today on the College Investor Audio Show. In fact, it is an income sharing agreement from Stride Funding. With Stride's ISA, you can avoid loans that come with 10-year commitments, but you do commit a percentage of your income to repayment. Is the trade-off worth it? Let's check it out. An income sharing agreement is an agreement where a person agrees to repay a set percentage of their income in the future in exchange for money today. ISAs are a relatively uncommon way to fund an education, though, but they might make sense for people who are averse to taking out traditional debt. There are some pros, and then, of course, there are some cons. Let's take a look at those. First, the pros, the good news. Downside protection. You only pay a percentage of what you earn. If you earn very little, you repay very little. Compared to private loans, this could be very helpful for you. Fixed repayment period. Government loans are repaid over 10 years to 25 years or more in some cases. The ISA is more of a rip the band-aid off approach, if you will. <laughs> the repayment period is usually from five to seven years. Now, there's generally a limit on repayment. Most ISAs limit the amount you repay over the life of the agreement. Once you reach that limit, you're done. Here are some of the cons though. Repayment can eat up a big chunk of your salary. If you exclusively use income sharing agreements, your repayment amount may eat up 15% or more of your annual salary. That's a significant amount of money to repay. You cannot refinance this. Once you take out an ISA, you're basically stuck in it as you agreed. It's not easy to refinance it to a standard student loan. You might overpay. A person who out earns expectations will definitely overpay on an ISA. Even with the limits to repayment, high earners may end up overpaying compared to a standard loan. Yikes. Not easy to do this math. <laughs> Comparing ISAs to loans is like impossible. You don't know what you'll earn after graduation. So you're just kind of stuck guessing. You, you don't qualify for public service loan forgiveness. ISAs are a form of private educational funding. You can't have the loan forgiven through a PSLF. Stride funding income sharing agreements. So stride funding is just one of the few private income sharing arrangements in the student funding marketplace today. And since it's so unique, it's such a unique form of financing, it's important to understand some of the fine print associated with stride funding's ISA. Here are a few details to understand. Five to 10 years of repayment. Stride funding offers income sharing agreements, arrangements, I should say, that last from five to 10 years following graduation. The repayment period starts after a grace period of six months, kind of like a traditional loan. Salary repayment requirements do vary. The percentage of income you repay depends on the amount you borrow. Each income sharing agreement is different, so Stride doesn't provide strict guidelines for this. The percentage is based on your expected income following graduation. An example would be that a nurse who borrows $10,000 will repay 3% of their income for six to eight years. Not too shabby. Higher expected earners, though, like doctors or engineers, may see much lower percentages. People expected to earn lower compensation, like teachers, journalists, that type of thing, may be required to share a higher percentage of their income. No payment when you earn less than $40,000. Very important. If you're earning less than forty grand a year or the monthly equivalent, $3,333.33, Stride funding will defer your arrangement for a month. The, you know, that means you keep your money during your lower earning years. But you'll repay Stride when you earn more. 25,000 annual funding limits. You can fund up to $25,000 per year of school through Stride. Twice funding repayment cap. So this means 
Stride limits your repayment to twice what you fund. That means a person who borrows $30,000 will repay no more than $60,000, no matter how much he or she earns. Should you use Stride funding to pay for school? Hmm. Well, Stride guarantees that you'll get rid of your student loans in under a decade. Since most people take decades or more to repay their debt, that's a great deal. If you don't plan to go into public service like the military, government, teaching, nonprofit work, all that stuff, the ISA from Stride, pretty good deal. But is the ISA from Stride funding better than federal student loans? Yeah, it's tough to say. I suspect that most expected high earners would be much better off taking out federal loans. Can't really say that for sure at this point, though. It is a risk, but taking out loans is a risk, too. That's what we have for today. I hope that was helpful. I like these reviews because if you, you know, you're looking into things, you can get blasted with a bunch of advertising and garbage, really, that you have to kind of sort through. So hopefully this helps you to sort through some of that to get to the nitty gritty of what some of these companies are offering. Hey, if you have any other questions, anything at all, you can check out our website and find the complete review at thecollegeinvestor.com. Just find the article Stride Funding Review. And you're all set. And we'll talk to you again very soon. Have an awesome day.